So we're back again. As usual, 1978 Toyota pickup truck, 20R engine, five-speed transmission. And back hopefully with the last, 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 hopefully last, part of the ignition system problem. Everything has been replaced down to this part. This is a fuel pump relay in common terms, as most people call them. Toyota calls them something else now. They call them a circuit opening relay. I don't know if we can see that, but it says something like fuel pump relay right on it. There's the part number. You can get replacements for these, for these trucks. It's a typical five pin relay, but it's a Nippon Denso part and it's exclusive to Toyota. Rectangular plug, five pins. There we go. It works the same as the regular Bosch style relay on it. It took me a while to figure this out because man oh man. <laughs> Sometimes when engineering, Japanese do it backwards. It works, but it's backwards. I'll try to explain. This plugs into a socket under the dash. There's five wires on it. Man, I should get a uh, wiring diagram. Let me go grab that. There we go. Let's see. There we go. As you can see, it's pretty well marked. Regular ignition comes from there. There's a run. There's start. See? From start terminal. There's the other side of the contacts that goes to the fuel pump, which goes to a ground. This comes down to the activation coil, which is this part. It goes down to a wire and goes down to the oil sender. Now, I did days and days and days of research on this, trying to figure this thing out. And I gotta tell you, it was detailed. The idea is, this relay is here for only one reason, it's a safety feature. When your truck is turned on, your vehicle's turned on, it's in, it's in the run position, and the engine stalls, you get in a crash, something like that. The engine stops running, and you lose oil pressure. Now I would think, this is, is, I mean, all of a sudden, it's just nothing more than a switch. I would think it would close when you get oil pressure. And when you lose oil pressure, it opens. When it opens, it de-energizes this coil, which then makes this go back over to the start, breaking the current. It doesn't matter if it's on here, because this is to your ignition switch, which is just a momentary. You actually have to physically turn it to get power to go through. But no, turns out I'm wrong. <laughs> Japanese did it backwards. This is normally closed, which means it's got contact to the ground, which is as it should be, if I just look over here at the oil light, because it lights up when you have no pressure. So, power in through the diode, the ground okay fine when you turn the key to run this thing energizes because now it's got to pass the ground it's got power going through here this energizes throws a solenoid throws this arm over to start so when you're cranking the vehicle you actually have power to the fuel pump which is pumping up through and pumping up to the carburetor. Once it starts and starts running, come back to the oil sender, you get up to four, five, six pounds of PSI of oil pressure, and this switch opens. So this de-energizes, and this flops back over to run. So now you have run power coming through the fuel pump. Makes sense now, but let me tell you, it took me days and days to figure this out because I was assuming this was a normally open switch. It's not. It's normally closed. 
unusual. I mean, engineering tells you, electrical engineering tells you, if you want to cut the power to a circuit, you open a switch. They close a switch to open it. <laughs> it's just Japanese thinking. I don't know why. But anyway, trying to replace one of these, even an aftermarket part, is about $70 to $80 for this little thing right here. There's, there's the contacts on the side. I don't know if you can see that right there. And these, there's like little buttons in there. There's contacts, and they get pitted over time because electricity arcs across here. What was happening is, is it would start and it would run. And I had it running 25 minutes and was getting the carb dialed in and checking the idle and the, and the mixture and all that stuff, wonderful stuff. And all of a sudden, truck just shuts off on its own. I mean, almost like an electrical problem. Boom. Go back in, turn the key, starts right back up, runs for 40 seconds, shuts off again. Get back in, turn the key, crank, 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 wouldn't even try to catch her run. That's the intermittent property of this switch, which drives people crazy. And make no mistake, a relay is nothing more than a two-position switch. So... What's going on is those contacts are pitted. They don't have the surface area they used to. They're not transmitting as, as much current as they used to. And fuel pump is going to draw anywhere from 3 to 8 amps of current, which is significant. But because of the lesser in contact, it'll actually have higher resistance than normal. And that higher resistance can create heat, which can cause even less transfer of power. And eventually it just opens up and boom, shuts off. End of story. Now, oh my, I don't know, did I mention the OEM part for this? If you can find it, it's $120 for this. <laughs> yeah, we can't afford that. So, bye-bye. Oh, and by the way, this is mounted under your dashboard by your steering column. And this is on all 72 to 78 trucks. Don't know about later. Sometimes they're mounted on the kick panel on the passenger side. You'll have to look around. Get a factory service manual. It'll tell you where it is. You can replace this because, as you can see in the diagram, I mean, there's the coil. You got a common, and you got two poles. Here's a replacement Bosch style. See that? Diagram's about the same. And after doing some research and figuring and back and forth, I figured out I can replace it with this. This piece came from Temco, as you can see, they're in the U.S. That's who they are, right there. Got this on eBay. Got the brand new relay, ready for 30, 40 amps, which is more than you're going to need. Socket, pre-wired. I did the little plugs on the end, that's another story. All this shipped to my door from California to Florida for under $5. And they guarantee this for a year, by the way. If anything goes wrong with it, they will replace it, no question. Not bad. And it seems to be better quality than the usual China-made ones that are out there. They're cheap, cheap, cheap. So, to these. Quarter-inch male spade lugs. Put them on there to take the place of these because I still have the socket under there. I didn't want to go cutting and wiring, cut the socket off and just wire it straight up wire to wire. Because, hey, you never know. You might come across one of these original Toyota ones again. You might want to run it. Who knows? I try to keep things original when I can. So the socket's still in there, still, still on the wires, no problem. With female quarter inch spade lug receptacle. Just wire in the quarter inch spade lug receptacle. I'm just going to push these into each receptacle individually. Yeah, it's not one click, but hey, you can't take an extra 10 seconds to put these in. No big deal. They'll work just fine. But there we go. We're going to get this installed, and hopefully she'll be running. Last time we did have a run after all the ignition work, it ran lots better than it did before. So we're on the, we're on the right track. If I still get the cutout issue, now I know it can only be one thing has to be the oil sender, which may also have an intermittent, <laughs> which is weird. But the last time we had it run, the light was functioning the way it was supposed to. Light was on 
when you're turned off and not running when it was cranking once it started up it went out in about two seconds no problem when it stalled those couple of times it took a couple of seconds and then the light came back on so it's the light seems to be working which means the sender's probably still working so no big deal but here's a, here's a solution for you it takes a little bit of brain work and guesswork and I might write it up and put it on a forum sometime. I don't know, but I want to put a video out on this so you know this is possible. This can be done. You don't have to spend 80 bucks. Five bucks, maybe a dollar or two on the connectors, big deal. But you're still talking 90% less. And this is pretty reliable. I mean, this, this Bosch design has been around forever. They use them in everything. They originally started with Porsches and VWs and then they spread out to other things. Even Toyota went to more of this style of relay after 2005 and like the Tacomas, which is the, you know, the successor to the Hilux and the regular old pickup. Even they stopped using these things. Oh, yeah. And if this will work, any Toyota truck from 77, 70 up with electric fuel pump in the tank that has a carburetor, this will work. If you have EFI, it'll also work. The only difference is instead of using the old pressure sender, they use something called an air meter in the uh, throttle body at EFI. It moves when there's air going. They figure if it's moved, there's air flowing, so it opens the switch just like the old sender, no big deal. It should work the same. Uh, I'm not gonna say for sure because I haven't tried it on an EFI model. Check your factory service manual, check your wiring. Check your wiring diagrams for wire colors. Backtrace it. It'll take a little while. I'm not the best at this, okay? I'll admit it. That's why it took me several days of figuring it out and puzzling it out. And I even had to diagram the socket. Let's see if we can see that better. There we go. Mm. Man, oh man. Light's not good. But diagram the socket out with the colors. I check check the bottom of the socket on the relay with a meter to see what did what. Label up the new one. And then label it up at where the new colors are going to go. There we go. So we can see that better. Uh, sorry about this light. But there you go. And which is which, and you know. But I got an old diagram, so I can, can't mess it up. But there you go. Cheap fix. Just take some brain work and some time. A couple days waiting for the mailman to get here to bring it to you. No big deal. This should mount right back where this one mounted. May have to open that hole a little bit for the bolt, but no big deal. So there you go. Cheap solution to keep your old truck running. Just thought I put out there for you. Um, don't know if I missed anything. This will work on pretty much anything 77, 78, on, on up to 95. Last year they used carburetors, like the 22R. You have a 22R with a carburetor. This should work. Like I said, check your, uh, check your manual, check your wiring. You'll see it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this helps somebody out there keep their truck going. We'll have more later. Thanks again.